one that affects you here this morning. And that's the one about work day at the parsonage, which we have every 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 once every year, once one time a year, at the parsonage on a Saturday, which is May the twelfth. So we hope you can come out and be with us. Won't take long. We'll get a few people out to help do the work. Quote of the week: Be gentle when you touch bread. <coughs> Let it not lie uncared for or unwanted. So often bread is taken for granted. There is so much beauty in bread. Beauty of sun and soil. Beauty of patient toil. Winds and rains have caressed it. Christ often hath blessed it. Be gentle when you touch bread. Hearts are unknown. Is that true or not? It is, isn't it? Something wonderful about bread. Any other announcements this morning? All right, this is the Lord's Day and the Day of Communion as we come to his table while we come expecting something from the Lord. Bear our minds and hearts for the worship service. We'll let the service begin. Father, we thank you for your love and care and for your presence. Good morning. I know you're probably surprised that I'm up here, but this is a paid position the month of May. So just kidding. <laughs> Would you please stand for the um, call to worship, please? <laughs> Praise God who has raised Jesus Christ to reign in power. Praise God who sends the Spirit and power of the church. Praise God with trumpet sounds. Praise God with flute and harp. Praise God with temple and the Praise God with strength and might. Let everything that has breath praise God. Please remain standing for the hymn of celebration on page 92 for the beauty of the earth.
please join me in the collect from Acts 17:28. God of life and death, we confess that sometimes we are not alive the possibilities that you offer. In the midst of pain, unfairness, and fear, we find no reason for hope. To give to hurt, to blame others, but we do not turn to you for help. Forgive us and show us how to share the new life offer through Jesus Christ. Amen. Please remain standing for the scripture lesson. Uh, the scripture lesson is taken from Acts uh, <clears throat> chapter 1, verse 10 through 12. Suddenly, two men dressed in white clothes were standing there beside them. They said, Why are you men from Galilee standing here and looking up into the sky? Jesus had been taken to heaven, but he will come back in the same way that you have seen him go. May God add his blessing to his word. <clears throat> Thank you, my dear. <clears throat> All right, for our meditation this morning, we want to uh, bring to you. Uh, a thought. Pastor uh, David Rosso, Rosso told the story about uh, when he was in high school. <clears throat> in his sophomore year, he made the varsity football team. He was a linebacker, and and uh, so he was uh, on the line and. When the other team was punting, he was out there trying to block the punt. And he told about one day they were behind six or eight points, and uh, they had an opportunity to score. And uh, because of him, they didn't uh, didn't score. He told about how it happened, and he said that <clears throat> he was watching the game process and he was in the game and he said that uh, the other team was on their fourth down and all of a sudden he said the uh, punter dropped back to punt on the fourth down he said i don't know what happened and how in the world i ever did it but i got through that line and went back there and blocked that punt and he said, I was so taken back, I just froze. I couldn't move. He said, I stood there and thought to myself, isn't it a grand thing that you've done in blocking this punt? Who ever thought that you'd ever, it would ever happen to you to block a punt like this? He said, the ball, <clears throat> when he blocked it, rolled back to the 15-yard line. And he stood there and watched the ball, and... He said, if he had gone after the ball, he could, have, he could have easily scored without any problem, but he didn't. He just stood there. And all of a sudden, he said, he heard someone yelling from the sideline, don't just stand there, get the ball. And his coach was standing there yelling at him to get the ball. Well, to make a long story short, he didn't move, and... The kicker went back and recovered the ball. They lost the game. When you think about uh, what's taken place on that football field and what took place with the disciples, you can see the simulation and how, how much alike it really was. Two men stood there as Jesus was taken up to heaven and watched him go. 
two angels appeared and said, Why are you men standing here? Why are you standing here? In other words, <clears throat> the angels evidently thought they should have been out doing something, but why are you standing here watching him go up to heaven? He will come again in the same manner in which God received him into the heavens. Well, the story in the book of Acts is very similar to where we are today. The disciples were clueless as to what was taking place in their lives during that period of time. And if we'd have been there, we'd have been the same. Who ever heard of someone rising from the dead? Have you, except Jesus? No, the disciples were astounded at what had taken place. Three days ago, he was hanging on a cross, and he died there and was put into a tomb, and he was left there. The next day, he was gone. He had risen from the dead and was alive forevermore. And now we've seen him taken up into the air right before our eyes, clueless as to what was going on and what had happened. It's not hard for me to understand this, and I hope it's not for you, we all find ourselves, to some degree or another, in the same fix that these disciples were. We sometimes <clears throat> have doubts as to whether or not that could have really happened. Did it really happen? Could it have happened to someone we knew? Or no? Don't know. And so we are sort of clueless about what has taken place. Well, to make a long story short, it was clueless about the importance they would have on the world today. Disciples were clueless about that. They had no idea that they would have such an impact on the world. Now, why is that so? It's so because for the same reason that that's there for you and me. How in the world will we and do we have an impact on the world about us today? There was only one way that the disciples would have an impact, and that was to go and do what God had told them to do, and that was to go and witness to all the world, to Judea, Jerusalem, Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the world to be my witnesses. That's what he has called, that's what he called them to do, and that's what he has called us to do. Now, you know, we, we may feel sometimes like what we give to the conference doesn't amount to anything. But friends, if you can't go, we can send someone. That was the first impression I had the Sunday I put my tithe in the offering in our home, my home church. I couldn't go, but I could send someone. And that was a great relief to me to know that I was having a part in sending someone to have an impact on the world. Well, we can do that. That's one of the ways we can do it. Another way that is where we live and work and play, to be kind and generous and loving the people we come into contact with. Herbert Wright died in his older years, and when he died, he didn't have any friends, so to speak. <clears throat> he had been a salesperson going from door to door, selling just meager household items, all kind of items, any kind you think of, he had them to sell, and he sold them. He made a living that way. He kept himself going that way. Well, time came for Herbert to die, and he died. And when he died, the funeral director reported to the pastor that I want you to have his funeral, if you will, but he's not going to have, there's not going to be very many people there. 
because he didn't have any family or friends. Family or friends. But one of the things that a lot of people overlook was the fact that Hubert was a man who raked leaves oftentimes for people who needed it. He carried the paper from the mail paper box into the house lots of times when he had an opportunity. He did just little jobs, took him no time to do, in order to help people out. And when the people saw his obituary in the paper, they couldn't believe that the paper said he had no friends. And they began to say to themselves, well, he was so kind and so good to us in so many ways. I'm going to the funeral. And when they showed up for the funeral, lo and behold, a thousand people showed up at the cemetery in Indianapolis for his funeral. And the pastor couldn't believe it. How in the world would a man who was a, just a minor salesperson reach so many people and touch the lives of so many people that when he died, a thousand people would show up for his funeral? I wonder. Well, <clears throat> We need to ask ourselves that question as well. The impact that we have on the community about us will determine who we are and what we're about in the community and in the world. We'll have a far greater impact than you realize on the people about you as we live and work and play around those we're with day by day. And so we'd encourage you to think about that. Now they were clueless then as to the impact they could have on the world. They're also clueless about the, <clears throat> the plan that Christ had for the world. Christ's plan for the world was that the world might be saved. He was leaving them here in order to carry on his work in the community and in the world. They would start in Jerusalem, go to Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the world carrying the gospel. It was an inner thing in their lives that the Holy Spirit had implanted and they would have an impact on the world. I read an article the other day about Elvis Presley. Elvis Presley, as you well know, was probably in his day, the, if not the best known, close to the best known country western singer around. He was a very, very popular person. When Elvis Presley was living, he had 34 people that he could count that were impersonating him. Think of this, 34. But when Elvis Presley died after his death, today there are 3,600 impersonators of Elvis Presley. Now you think of that. 36, don't say 100, 36,000 impersonators around the world of Elvis Presley a day. And so we can understand how we can impact the world on beyond that we're doing that. You'll remember that when <clears throat> Janet and I went to Bronson, we told you visiting Elvis' shrine. And all around that room, I remember telling you this, all around that room were canceled checks that Elvis had wrote to help people all over the world. I'm telling you, it was a big room. And from wall to wall, Checks that he had written to help people. Is it any wonder he had such an impact on the world in which we live? Well, we can have that kind of impact. Maybe we, you don't have to do a big thing to have that kind of impact. All you have to do is to practice the principle of love. If you love people and care for people, you will have an impact on the community and the world. If you don't, you won't. But if you do, 
Nothing can stop that. Nothing can turn that around in any sense of the word, for we know it to be so. Well, God came, and when Jesus went away bodily, he left his word with the body, another body, the body that we call the church. The church is the body of Christ. You know that? We've told you that time and time again. Who is the body of Christ? The church is the body of Christ. With all its frailties, with all its warts, with all its imperfections, the church is the body of Christ. He will use that body in order to rule the world in peace and grace. And so we have it for him. Now, they were clueless about those things. And they were clueless about what the Holy Spirit could do. Look at that. Did you have any idea when you became a Christian that the Holy Spirit could take someone like you, like me, and use us the way he has and will? Hey. There are a lot of things that we don't know about that the Holy Spirit has used us to perform and to do in the lives of others about us, right? And so that's the way we live. The Holy Spirit is able to do that. When you think about what the Holy Spirit can do, think of those, a huge horse is guided and ruled by what? club? No. With a small bit in the horse's mouth, he is guided and led in the direction that the person wants him to go. The same way is true of a huge steamer ship. It may be a huge ship, but how is it guided? It's guided by a rudder, a small rudder, to go to the right, to the left, or straight ahead. Just a small rudder to God. The Holy Spirit is that way. He guides us and leads us, fills us and equips us as his people to be what he wants us to be in the world today. The disciples didn't have a clue. And Jesus is saying to them, as he's saying to this, well, don't just stand there. Do something. Do something for those about us in the world today. Amen? Amen. All right. Would the ushers please come forward? return a portion of our gifts to you, O Lord, in hopes that it will advance the kingdom of our Lord and Savior. Amen.
The hymn of preparation is, O uh, Love Divine, How Thou Not Done, um, page number 287, please. <laughs> Packing up the dreams God's planted In the fertile soil of you Can't believe the hope he's granted Means a chapter in your life is through but we'll keep you close As always It won't even seem You've gone Cause their hearts In big and small ways Will keep the love That keeps a strong friends are friends forever if the Lord's the Lord of them and a friend will not say never cause the welcome will not end though it's hard to let you go in the Father's hands we know that a lifetime's not too long to live as friends.
With the faith and love God's given Springing from the hope we know We will pray the joy you live in Is the strength that now you show But we'll keep you close As always It won't even seem You've gone Cause our hearts in big and small ways Will keep the love that keeps us strong Friends are friends forever If the Lord's the Lord of them and a friend will not say never Cause the welcome will not end Though it's hard to let you go In the Father's hands we know That a lifetime's not too long To live as friends Friends are friends forever If the Lord's the Lord of them and a friend will not say never Cause the welcome will not end Though it's hard to let you go In the Father's hands we know That a lifetime's not too long To live as friends That a lifetime's not too long to live as Would you turn with me, if you will, to page 15 in the front of your books, hymn books, the bottom of the page. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join your ending hymn. Holy, 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 Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Let heaven and earth be high. Let And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Then all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. All right, let's take a moment this morning and share our joy and our concerns. Anything good happened this past week you'd like to share with us, anyone? Yes, ma'am. Good. Stan is there. Okay. <laughs> That's good. All right. Anyone else? Yes. Um, I got a, a cortisone shot this week in both of my knees, so now I have bionic knees. But <laughs> but I was told I was going to have to have knee replacement, so I'm avoiding that as long as I can. But the in shots one or both of them. And both of them. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. So 
Um, so hopefully the cortisone shots will work for a while. Yeah, yeah. hope so. That's right. <laughs> yep. All right, anyone else? <coughs> you did? Okay. Do we have any birthdays or any other anniversaries? Okay. All right, let's just, just sing happy anniversary and birthday. Okay, anniversary, okay. Do you happy anniversary? Do you happy anniversary? God bless you. Happy anniversary to you. Anyone else this morning? All right. Uh, <clears throat> we've got a long list of people here in the charge who need our prayers. Worshipers at Bethesda Church with Bev and her son Kurt, who's waiting for a liver transplant. Chris, <coughs> Chris and Stephanie Custer. Chris is, has seizures and having a hard time. Sid and, and the family of Patty Jenkins. Kathy Paddock, Pat Dow, Jerry Malk, Sandy Carter, Sandy's mother, Lady Triggs. And then Yvella has Ted and Janet Schultz, Dr. Jeranko, Betty Rowe, Gordon Olson family, and Skip Dawkins. And here we have Norma and her son, Tim. Everything going all right there, Norma? Okay. Marge Loesch and Peggy Boyd. Peggy, how are you doing? All right. Hang in there. All right. Don Char Trumbull and Francis Hauser. Francis, do you have some concerns, right? Yeah. Doris. I don't think I've heard that before. Has anybody else heard that? Is that right? Okay. All right. Jane's uh, not not well, we're told, this morning. Need to remember her in her prayer. And Jane's sister, Wanda, Wilma Hawkinsmith. I doubt to see Wilma this week. <coughs> She's having a... A lot of problems getting around. How's Jason doing, Joyce? Okay. And Randy and his loss. And Cal and Faye Thompson, their loss to family. Barbara and her daughter-in-law's mother and sister-in-law. And Dara Engelbright. And uh, anyone else? We don't have one here. All right, let's bow our heads for prayer. Our Heavenly Father, as we bow in your presence this morning, we come to you because you said there were two or more. Ask anything, it shall be done, and we believe that, Lord. And so we pray you look upon us as we gather here this morning for this communion service. Would you meet each of us at the communion rail this morning, that we might know that you're alive and that you're well. And then, our Lord, as we bow here this morning, we pray for the church, local and universal. Father, if the enemy has his way, he would destroy the church, but we know that you're alive forever, and it belongs to you. And so we pray that you'll lift the standard against the enemy. When he'd come in like a flood, Lord, would you lift such a standard that he would run and scurry for his life? And then, our God, this morning as we bow here, I pray that you'll be with others about us. You know the needs. Move across this community, this area, this state, nation, and world. Lifting up the Christ, we pray in your name. Have your way. And then, our God, this morning as we come, we hold before you the people whose names we've mentioned. 
We have so much to be thankful for, but yet the needs are much, many. And so we pray that your will would be done. We pray for their healing and their health. And then we pray, too, this morning for their caregivers. Lord Jesus, caregiving is not easy, you know. But I pray this day that you be with those who care for others. Watch over them and keep them. And we'll give you all the glory and all the praise. For we ask it in the name of him that taught us to pray. Would you pray with me the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. All right. Now the Lord Jesus, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, broke it and said, this bread is my body, which is broken for you. Take and eat this in remembrance of my death until I come. And then after supper, he took the cup and said, this cup contains my blood, which is shed for you. Take and drink, and as often as you drink from this cup, you'll remember the Lord's death until he comes again. So would you come with me this morning as we commune? We'll start over here and then take these and come across. And get Janet over there while they're coming. Give for you, Sandy. Blood of Christ, give for you, Wayne. Blood of Christ, give for you, Clayton. Blood of Christ, give for you, Joyce. Blood of Christ, give for you, Peggy. Blood of Christ, give for you, Cora. Blood of Christ, give for you, Annette. Randy, blood of Christ, give for you. Blood of Christ, give for you, Ronnie. You may arise now, go in peace, go as his disciples and his people. Amen. His presence and power. Amen.
now, if you will, let the prayer of dedication in the bulletin on the right-hand side of your bulletin will be up here, yes. Dear God, thank you for your love, forgiveness, and your empowerment to be servant. Help us to be about your work as a witness to your presence. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The hymn is Jesus is All the World to Me, verse 1, 3, and 4, 469. Jesus is all the world to me, I, I joy. In our mission statement, our mission is to live and share the gospel of Jesus Christ. I pray I will go forgiveness, love, God, spiritual. Our Father, we go into our homes and into the world today. We go praying that you make an impact in and through us. Help us to know that we belong to you and that you belong to us and to the world. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen.